my work is not only about the specifics of experiences that perhaps relate to the personal narrative, but more broadly relate and are framed by and frame histories that otherwise are invisible. I try to allow the work to speak to me, you know, the form as it's being made, you know, the aesthetics drive the final piece. So I'm guided by an idea, but in the end it's the form that will also tell me where to take things. I mean, I think that there are certain key pivotal moments in my life that have been really formative to the nature of the work I make. So Synapse, which is part of the Baltic exhibition, those photographs that are projected onto my own body are images that I photographed in India. When I first returned to India after 19 years or so, having come to the UK, and were photographed on 35 mil colour slides, which for a long time after I came back from India, that first trip, I just felt like they were, I was carrying them around like my passport. So they occupied my psyche in, oh, in, in many ways and became so precious to giving me a sense of who I am. It's all about the imagined space and desire and longing and what that longing does. And then, you know, in 1997, I became a mum completely unexpectedly. And my son <laughs> turned my world upside down in a good way. And this is what relates to you know, Birdsong, which I'm so thrilled is being exhibited at, at Baltic. It's a piece that is based on the first joined up sentence that my son spoke, aged approximately 18 months. At the time we were making soup together, you know, he was breaking mushrooms and I was chopping whatever. And suddenly out of the blue, he just said, I'd like a horse to live with us, Mum. And I said, well, where will it live? You know, and he said, right here with us in our living room. He didn't see any division as a child, as children don't, between what was possible and what was impossible. And so this moment in my life of my son's voice coming into the world became really pivotal to the nature of my practice. As his speech and his desires were coming into the world and being formulated, at the same time in my life, very sadly, my father was dying of cancer and birds were the first sound I heard when he died. So for a while after, I began to draw and to paint a bird a day, almost as a way of exercising my ghosts and as a way of obsessively marking time. It was time. He had left already. Letters came. Chitty, chitty, chitty. A dark brown, wiry looking boy with a wide open face and full lips darted from gate to door, waving a blue colored letter. I did not want to see it. For in it was not even half my heart. 
Making Lumen was incredibly important for me because it was a way for me to really enter, try and enter my mother's head and imagine how she must have felt at that time, you know, leaving her family, everything that she loved, and traveling to the very country responsible for a really violent colonial rule. We tend not to hear the voices of the women who have to live through these consequences and these very traumatic moments in history and in time. So Lumen was really an extraordinary opportunity for me as an artist to create a work that allowed me to reflect on this experience of the matrilineal voice and to try to remember my own history, really, and my own experience in relation to that. Because, of course, I remember going from, you know, playing in huge forested landscapes to being in a very different landscape when we arrived in London, which is really where I grew up. It was very grey. My mother kept us very close. So in this strange way, I felt as if, you know, this opportunity to make this work with Baltic and with Kettle Yard and with FEU, uh, Film and Video Umbrella and Bristol Museum, um, presented this remarkable opportunity for me to pull all of these threads together in a way that found space for my mother and my grandmother and myself to speak. And I had to really think carefully how I would work with the monologue in a way that still allowed these three voices to interplay with each other. And at the same time, to only have one actress. And so I found myself thinking about the kinds of devices that I could use formally in order to replicate that sense of echo and that sense of play with um, my subject matter, but also formally with the characters. And my actress is brilliant. You know, she plays this very well and she interchanges between and it's a semi-fictional work you know between one character you know some of it is based on my mother some of it is based on dialogue from myself as a child and some of it recalls my my grandmother but we use two circular mirrors in order to create this depth and these different formal spaces. Before partition, when I was a young girl, my days were spent climbing trees and swimming in ponds and poking wild fruit, checking for the scent the ripest. The juice of the mangoes with split skins where baby teeth pierced into peach-colored flesh dribbled down the skinny arms and happy faces of brown children once upon a time. To ignore questions of imperialism and colonial history is to repeat where we are. So I hope that my work contributes to allowing engagement with those things. At the same time, re-engaging with the need to rewrite, decolonize art history, and to see the importance of that in relation to and 
in conjunction with how significant the cultural arm is to broader economic, social and political strands of government that have huge impact on every single one of us. Swallow me whole and spit me not out. Lumen is a unit of light and it is about hope. And it's about hope at a very dark time.